Welcome to Bahasa Bali, lesson 40. Today's lesson will be about the Balinese script. I won't teach you how to read or write it here. Hopefully, though, that this will give you an insight into uh, their script that you see around the place in temples and different places on street signs even in Bali. The Balinese script derives from an Indian script originally, as does all of the scripts of Southeast Asia. And that's why you see similarities between Thai, Cambodian, Balinese. The Balinese script is virtually the same as Javanese and Sundanese scripts, slightly different stylizations of the same symbol. Javanese has two extra letters. It has two sorts of T's and two sorts of D's. They have a T and a D that we don't have in Balinese. We have the standard T and D. Uh, and we have 18 basic letters in Balinese. We refer to the Balinese language by the first five letters of their alphabet. So the first five letters are hana chara ke. So that's what we refer to their script as the hana chara ke Javanese, the hana chara ko. So what we do is with 18 basic symbols, they each symbol represents a consonant and a vowel attached. So to change the vowel. We put a symbol either before or after or above or below the original symbol. And that will change, uh, for example, if we take the letter N and we change the vowel, we can change it into Ne, Na, Nu, Ni, No, for instance. There is a symbol that represents the H at the end of a word or the R at the end of a word, matur, for instance, there'll be a symbol above that will give you that R at the end and there'll be a, um, uh, a symbol representing the H for words that end in H. Each symbol also has a, a representing uh, the same sound represented below the original character. And we use that to suspend to insert it between um, a sound. For instance, if we get a, a syllable that is consonant, consonant vowel, then we use this other symbol to suspend below it to insert the, the middle consonant. For an example, if we have a letter or a symbol or a syllable, three, then that's consonant, consonant, vowel. So I take the letter T, I put a symbol above it to change it into T, and I take the R symbol, which is suspended, and I place it below the T symbol, and that will give me three. And you'll find that the other major problem with learning to read Balinese is that there is no gaps between the words. So it takes a fair bit of experience reading Balinese before you start to see where one word ends and another begins because you get that confusion of suffixes and prefixes all blurring together. So it takes a little bit of practice before you start getting fluent in reading Balinese. Very few Balinese people read Balinese fluently. Very few read it at all, even though they're supposed to learn it at school. There are other stranger symbols that they use to represent sounds that come from older languages, even as far back as Sanskrit. They have symbols representing sounds from Kawi, which is old Javanese as well. And they have a symbol system uh, uh, for numericals. So one, two, three, four, they have symbols all representing those numbers as well. Um, fairly easy to get a hold of a book that will teach you these symbols. If you go to any of the bookshops 
in Bali. They will sell books that are for school children because Balinese language is a compulsory subject in the schools, or it was when I was living there. So hopefully that gives you an insight into the Balinese language. Um, it is a little bit more difficult than reading the Latin script, which most people do nowadays, but it's very interesting to do anyway. So good luck with it all. Cheers.